Okay, so now you've got to a stage where you're consistent with your chain. I think it's the next stage really is to take you onto a simple pattern using the chain method, just so you can get your head around a simple pattern um, while using the technique that you've just learned. So we're going to create 16 chains. So we've done one. I'm going to let me come back into camera. So I've done my slip knot already. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I've got sixteen chains there. Then what I'm going to do, not including the loop that is on your hook, you do not count this one, you only count the chains that you've made. So when it says count back six, that's not including the one you've made, it's including the ones that are here. So one, three, four, five, six. We're going to take our hook through there and we're going to create a slip stitch. Now slip stitch is yarn over and you pull all the way through those two loops. It basically is like a wall glue. <laughs> It brings things together without ad adding any height at all. So we've got basically 10 stitches now and a loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to work over bringing the tail or the chain that we've made to our right hand side. We're then going to work into the middle of our circle. So we have a circle here and we're going to go take a hook through it and then we're going to slip stitch again. So slip stitch and that will reposition us. So that means we're repositioned now and we're in the right place. And you can see how that has changed the way the circle or the centre of our petal uh, flower is sitting. Then we're going to count eight chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to go back in and we're going to create a slip stitch like so. And then we're going to go and repeat this again. So we're going to repeat the same thing again. So slip stitch to reposition us. And then we're going to go eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me just pull some wool and just get my tail out of the way. And then we're going to slip stitch again into the circle like so and then we can shift it around to give us a bit more space so you can actually move that across like so and then we're going to repeat that same those same petals and we're going to have six petals in total so i'm going to do some more one two three four five six seven eight and then we're going to slip stitch again into that area Now I am using a chunky wool, so it's probably going to take up a little bit more space, but it's always better for the camera if we're using chunky wool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pull my wool a little bit more. Re-anchor or reposition because I've moved my wool a little bit. And then go back into that circle, slip stitch again move everything around so we've got four now four petals and then we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight like so and then we're going to push that round again and then we're going to do our last petal one two three four five six seven I, now I know I'm working quickly on these petals um, and then we're just going to go and do our slip stitch there okay so now we're going to go and create another 16 chains so now we've done our finished petal I don't know if you can see it there I'm just going to quickly do my 16 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 
So, you basically repeat the same method. Okay, so sometimes you've got to reposition it just to make it look a little bit more flowy. And you can see how the back of it, you um, it follows the line. So the line of the chain that we did in the original bit. So let's have another look because I was moving that around and not thinking. There you go. Like I say, you can reposition it and then you can do another flower and it will come in about here and the flowers will look nice and close together. Now, if you want them a further distance apart, you just add more chains and just bear in mind, you know, so if you wanted, for instance, um, and you wanted it a little bit further apart, so you've got 16 stitches, you're coming back on six. So you could do an, an extra four, which would give you 20 chains in total. And you just come back on the 14th chain. Um, you come back on the six of the chain backwards, but that would leave you 14 chains open and that would give you that extra distance you could make them for headbands you could make them for garlands in your house you can literally do anything so all you need to do is follow the pattern create your 16 chains and where there are stars um, those stars will correlate to the next star so for instance if there is one star and it says repeat you go back to the star the one star so it's coded basically so if there are three stars you go back to the three star if there's one Go back to the one and two and two. And that is very simple pattern reading, which if you're successful, well done. It may take some attempts because, again, not only are you now using your handheld skills and coordination, you are now using your memory and following a pattern. So, again, it's going to create some little hiccups along the way. You're going to hit some problems, but that's OK, because at the end of the day, you are pattern reading. And it's all about coordination and using all sides of your brain at the same time. It's going to be an issue, but it's not going to be an issue forever. Practice, practice, practice. And as long as you do that and you do it regularly, it'll become second nature. And this is the best time to learn pattern reading when you're learning.